Hey there. Uh, finally back to a, this is supposed to be the standard winter day in Michigan. <clears throat> Cold, windy, and gray. But it's kind of nice considering there's been sunshine so much more. Uh, this morning is, uh, as I've been hiking along, I've been thinking about a nice light and airy topic, the topic of evolution. And uh, not necessarily evolution of life, <clears throat> but the way that, uh, that things have gotten progressively better for human beings throughout the course of existence, especially in the last, I don't know, 53 years since I've been on Earth. Uh, and a lot of the evidence that I point to comes from the movie Cocoon. And uh, in the movie Cocoon, I always think of uh, Wilford Brimley. And he, he just is a character that sticks out probably because I love his big wal walrus mustache. But here's a fun fact. I looked it up the other day. In the movie Cocoon, Wilford Brimley was 45 years old. So when I think about aging and evolution and how we're in a much better spot at 50 now than we would have been 10 or 20 years ago, I think of Wilford Brimley. And, uh, but also, you know, when you think about that, a lot of it has to do with just evolution on information and what we know about being healthy and living longer and stress management. And stress management really is the thing that escalates our, our pace of life <laughs> toward the end faster than anything else. And if you really think about it as you were going through school as kids, well, at least people that are in our generation, there wasn't a lot of time spent on stress management or anything like that. In fact, their stress management was, we're going to beat you into submission to act like everybody else because we're... We've got a factory of human beings that we're turning out. Obviously not that dramatic, but but there wasn't a lot about, uh, about uh, stress management. And really, um, there wasn't even a lot of education about nutrition. I think that was when the food pyramid came out and, and there was some information about, you know, sugar being okay or whatever. <laughs> Just all kinds of weird misinformation that has nothing to do with positive health. But the big thing that I as I was reflecting back, and, and when I think about any type of pain in my life, the majority of it comes from when I get stuck in loops in my head. You know, whether it's about past events that have happened, I mean, even as past as like just getting out of a meeting and then obsessing over how the meeting went and whether it went bad or, or what I could have done differently and just getting stuck in that loop over and over. And maybe something will distract me, but then immediately I just get back in that loop and it's just over and over. Or there might be something I'm really concerned about, like an impending deadline or, or uh, a situation that I'm stressed out about where I don't know what the outcome is gonna be. And then I get stuck in that loop and it just goes around and around and around. And, I, and even if I bust out of it, like, boom, there I am back into it. And I was thinking about that. And really, you know, we, we talk about muscle memory and all that stuff as it relates, relates to athletics or, or really lots of things. But, but uh, the brain is a muscle and it has a memory. And if you happen to be type A like me or whatever, or just tend to spend a lot of time up in your head, one of the challenges is that muscle starts to create that memory and it's really easy to trip and default back into that. But one of the things that they never really talked to us about as we were growing up in, as kids was meditation. So anytime somebody talks about meditation, we always say, oh, I can't do that, I can't stop my brain or blah, 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 whatever. We've got all these excuses or, you know, a bunch of hippy dippy baloney, whatever it is. But that's because it was never mainstream and never taught to us. But really, when you think about the logical thing about meditation is what you're doing is exercising your brain to be able to help help that your brain not latch to these thoughts or latch to these, these different uh, circular ways of thinking. It allows you to relax and actually focus on what's happening right now. I mean, a lot of the time I'll just sit here as I'm hiking along and stop and listen to the wind coming through the trees, feel the wind touching my skin if it's breezy out, whatever it happens to be. But like, I'm not under threat at that moment. I'm actually enjoying 
everything that's going on around me. And the beauty is we have that at any moment that we want to, as long as we can figure out a way to bring that muscle memory about, to get us out of obsessing about the past or frantically worrying about the future and just enjoy the moment that we're here. But meditation is a really incredible thing. It can be frustrating if you're, you know, as you start to break out of the habit of just obsessing. I mean, that's constantly running in the red all the time, develop such firmly entrenched habit behaviors about like living in your head and focusing on those loops that it takes a lot of time and practice and by no means am I an expert but there's lots of different types of meditation one of them is walking meditation and I get that a lot some of it is you know I think they call it forest bathing where you just surround yourself with nature whatever it happens to be but the, the easiest thing is just focus on your breathing and recognize that you can breathe and that it feels good and focus as you're breathing about how it fe how the parts of your body feel. But it's just about being in the moment, busting yourself out of those loops of obsession about the past or the future, which we can't change. All we can do is impact them based on the way we approach future decisions. So it's just really good to start to get out of the, the, the social judgment of meditation and start to recognize it's one of the biggest things that's gonna help impact our ability to go forward in a brand new way into our 50s and actually enjoy life and not live underneath the shackles of the bullshit, foundational, incorrect beliefs that we clung to forever. But that's it for today. I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. See ya.